clean situation, the condition, the peak critical. So uh, we, we, we have mentioned about this situation happen when you have stress built up inside the beam, okay? So if, you have, if the beam encounter compressive stress, so the, the beam can be pushed from both sides and to bulk up. So uh, now, uh, because we have a very long spring system, so we consider if we have uh, our sensor actuator at the center, but the beam will suspend and for uh, at a long distance. So a long supported uh, area uh, between them, the distance is a long distance. And uh, if it is a compressive stress occur inside the beam. So the beam you will feel is a compressive too much, it will be bulk up. So in this case, all the actuator will be elevated into a, a certain kind of a distance uh, to the bottom surface. So in this case, the overlap of the finger will be uh, become some problem, will have some problem. So uh, the device will fail. So um, to solve this problem, if we consider the other case, we move the support close to the center. So the rest of the part will be extend. Okay, so in this case, when you have some compressed stress, uh, the side, um, the outside part of the beam uh, can be extended freely without any constraint. So here, uh, when you look into the stress uh, on the extended beam, you won't see any stress built up inside. Okay, instead, only the small portion of the inner part, you can see still some uh, built-in uh, compressive stress. According to the equation, the length of the, the beam will be so critical uh, to define your final P critical, the, the critical, uh, I mean the, the buckling effect. So if you have a shorter beam, the P, P critical will become large, okay? That means that the beam will become not so easy to bulk up, become stronger, okay? So in this case, uh, the situation of a beam bending up, buckling up, will be uh, easier to solve, okay? So that's why we folded the beam and put the, the support at the center instead of the two end, okay? And if you have a tension inside the beam, it's okay. The beam will become flatter, okay? Uh, so they won't bulking, bulking up, okay? Now we consider the final case about the non-uniform residual stress occurring in the beam. So for non-uniform residual stress, so not only some kind of uniform stress, for example, like a, a compressive or tensile stress, but also the stress is not uniformly distributed along the surface. For example, if, a, if we have a more compressive uh, stress on the bottom than the top, okay? So after you um, release the beam, so the beam will look like a, um, this kind of stress can be considered uh, two different kind of stress uh, combination. One stress is what we call the uniform stress. The uniform part will be, for example, here in this case, the compressive stress. So the, the, the whole beam will feel it's uh, com compressed uh, at the inside. And the other one is a uh, rotational stress, okay? The rotational stress, that means um, the beam originally is uh, like a curving up. You, you need to use this kind of stress to bend it down to make it, make it flat as a center part, okay? So the outside one is a free uh, structure without any stress. So it's a, it's a, it's a more um, comfortable, you know, position structure uh, of the of the beam actually so the beam without any stress so you want to bend the beam back into the situation uh, similar to the center you need to not only rotate in this direction but also need to compress and to make them pack the inside the, the beam uh, with a similar um, stress situation here okay uh, <laughs> 这个应力呢,刚才前面讲的是均匀的应力,对不对,均匀的应力它只会延长缩短,所以大家都一样,没有问题,上面下面都一样。但是另外一种就是不均匀的,这比较常看到是不均匀的,不均匀的这个材料应
，他可能下面的应力感到的压力比上面的感受到的压力要大。OK， 所以这种情况你把它可以分解成两种应力的组成，一种是均匀的应力的部分，另外一个部分呢是旋转的部分，就是 bending 的部分，嗯，弯弯曲的部分。好，所以你看右边这个东西，这个结构如果说没有应力的情况下，它基本上是 curve up 的，原来的情况，很自然的情况是 curve up， 它喜欢这样子，这是没有应力的状况。你现在呢？要把它呃，把它装回到平面上的时候呢，你要做两个事情。第一个事情是，好像这个应力所显示的，你必须要故意去把它转往下扭转，它本来是往上翘起来，对不对？要把往往下压，对不对？这第一个扭转，这第一个 bending。第二个还要让它缩回去，才能重新装回到原来它 release 前的那个状况。release 前看起来是平的嘛，对不对？你 release 完以后，它就升起来。又往上翘，对不对？所以你反过来想要装回去的话，你要把它往下压，然后再缩回去。所以你做 i n c o n t e r 就是这两个应力。所以在里面这个还没有被 release 的部分，它看到就这两个应力是被压回去，再缩回去的这两个应力合起来的结果。OK， so the inner part with stress. So you consider, uh, there are two actions, uh, in the inner part. One is uh, we need to bend the thing down, okay? Then we need to contract, uh, compress them into a smaller space. So the inside part will feel these two stress combination. So it's a uh, become a stress gradient. So that's why uh, usually when we release the beam, okay, usually the beam will not only extend but also will curve up. If you if they encounter this kind of stress originally, okay. So now you draw two lines. One line is in the center; it's not released yet because we have two boundary uh, support here to constrain them without uh, any further movement. But the outside uh, structure, there's no constraint, so they can extend and also curve up freely. Okay. So that's a, a non the situation of a non-uniform residual stress. Okay. So with this non-uniform residual stress, if you support at the center, you, you only curve up at, at the border. It's still okay because your actuator is located at the center, so the center position will be kept uh, 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 a fixed distance to the bottom surface without the elevation. So it's important. Okay, if you design uh, the support at the at the sides, you usually will have this kind of structure happen. The center part will be elevated uh, above the surface, so they will fail the uh, the, the the driving uh, condition. Okay, because the overlap will, will be failed. There's no overlap at all if you elevate the center part. The status uh, on, on ground, but your, uh, uh, your uh, actuator will be above the surface, above distance. So that's a problem. So that's why we need to consider to design the support not at the border but at the center. Okay, try to keep the uh, distance short, the length short. And also, uh, this situation can also um, Solve the problem of the curving up problem. Okay, so you have only the can there ever be in the spring, the, the edge of the spring curving up a little bit, but the, but the spring still functional. But the spring constant will increase a little bit because you you have different structure. Originally you have a flat structure, so the deflection in this direction may be uh, softer. However, currently you are curving up, so deflection here the the moment inertia will increase actually. Okay, the spring will become stronger if you curve up. But still, the, the system still can work because um, uh, as long as uh, the center actuator keep the same distance to the bottom surface, uh, the overlap of the, the finger uh, will keep the same. So, so in that case, the, uh, the whole system can still work. Okay, uh, the another thing is regarding the stiction. We actually mentioned it uh, earlier already, so just uh, keep in mind. So um, this uh, device has a lot of suspension part, and also they consider a long and soft beam as a spring. So stiction will become a very serious problem for this kind of actuator uh, after the, um, your application process and the releasing process. So uh, we mentioned earlier in the circuit time machine, uh, so here just give the you some uh, advice again. So to overcome the station problem, actually uh, we need to consider the substation effect. So we need to do 
some things to try to reduce the, um, the, the subtension, or structure-wise, we need to reduce the size, reduce the total length of the device, otherwise it will become too flexible. And also, um, sometimes we can also try to employ some residual stress. Uh, so the current output sometimes is not that bad, actually. The current output can help the structure to move, move from the, the station of the surface. So sometimes the curve up can help a little bit. Okay, but you cannot have too much actually. <laughs> okay. And all the special reason I think as we mentioned before, the all coming station powder after releasing. Okay, finally I'll give the example uh, when we talk into all the parameters and to see the final results. So uh, currently we are using the MOMS process. So the total material we can use only around like a two layers of polysilicon and two layers of superficial uh, oxides. And at the bottom, we have a supporting material of poly zero and also insulated uh, silicon nitride thing. On top of another um, uh, electric uh, metal beam thicker, okay, as we uh, have seen in the St. Leon Labs uh, uh, work, okay, for the micrometer, remember the micrometer work, so they have a comp drive actuator. So they stack two layers together to form a thicker uh, can ever be, okay? So you can do that as well. Okay, so now we consider uh, this kind of uh, parameter uh, for the gap and other width and other the, the thickness of the beam. So we can have the, um, the uh, A, uh, A is, uh, let's see. So the problem A is the can never be the length of can never be. The C is the, uh, the size of both of the can never be. G is the overlap. And the gap um, is the D. And also some kind of problem over here. So um, so we just uh, quickly give the some quick view. So the important thing is like a gap, 30 micron overlap. And the Z, 2 micron is a gap between two, two of the beam. And the thickness of beam is a 4 micron. And also some kind of density and other numbers will give a 20 pairs uh, of a count drive. And others you can uh, take into consideration. So then we put all the parameters together. First, we find out the proof mass. So the proof mass is um, um, <coughs> you need to take some time to calculate. Uh, the proof mass is co consists of the, all the area, okay, including the actuator part, the comp, the comp structure here. But uh, don't count the stator part. Stator part is, does not belong to the center actuator part. So the actuator part is including the comp, including spring system and other supporting system. Okay. So those are um, structure with a light color. You can see the, um, the structure is, a, is a suspended above the surface. Okay. So you can take into account all of the area times the thickness and then times of the, uh, the density you can get the mass. Okay. So the mass is quite small. Uh, after you do the calculation, you find only 40, uh, it's around 50 milligram. So compared to the previous one, the previous uh, astronomer usually will have like a microgram, even to milligram. Okay, that kind of proof mass. So here we have a smaller proof mass. That means we have a high frequency bumps. It can move faster. The frequency response depends not only on the mass, also uh, on the spring constant as well. So we will see the spring constant later. So for the spring constant, after the calculation, uh, A times the K0, okay, we got a four Newton meter. So uh, compared to the previous one, previous one, the accelerometer, we have a very short spring uh, system, very short kinetic system. So uh, the, the, the spring constant for the accelerometer is around like thousands, right? couple thousands. Here we, we have only like five Newton, okay. So uh, the spring constant become like a hundred times, even a thousand times smaller. So the spring constant become very, very soft. But at the same time, you also reduce the proof mass. So uh, for the frequency response, you combine these two together to find out. So the frequency response is uh, like a 50 kilohertz. It's only 10 times higher than the previous one. The previous one is around 5 kilohertz. But here we got like a 50 kilohertz, a little bit higher because we have a smaller proof mass and uh, 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 and also much softer spring. Okay. So combine these two together, we find out the, the final things like this. 
Okay, so so the movement of uh, these uh, devices is faster than previous one. Okay, the damping uh, we consider uh, the simplest one. Uh, here we uh, assume the quality factor is 100. Okay, using very simple uh, assumption because uh, for if you operate the system inside atmosphere, um, usually the quality factor is ranging around 10 to 100. So here we're using the optimized uh, uh, op optimal uh, value 100 to plug in to quickly to see the damping. So damping coefficient here um, actually is not very high. Okay. So this value uh, when we compare to, um, to the speed and previous one is not very high. Okay. And then the maximum force uh, at the conversion part is only 1.55 micro newton. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's small, actually, compared to our requirement in the final project. The final project, what we want you to uh, design the actuator with a 10 micronewton ability uh, to uh, to provide the force of larger than 10 micro, micronewton. Uh, from the peak condition of this uh, device, you see it, it can give you only 1.55 micronewton, so it's still uh, seven, eight times more to go, okay? So you consider a different way. Uh, to provide more force. And also the displacement. The displacement uh, under this kind of small force, the displacement is not uh, very far away as well because you have a string uh, to keep the, uh, uh, the, the, the actuator moving forward. So the displacement is only 0 0.34 micron. It's also very small. Originally, you want you to design a 10 micron displacement. Still <laughs> not easy, okay? Let's just keep a quick review. And then we can uh, give the buckling situation. So the buckling stress is 1.7 millinewton. So compared to the driving force only in micronewton range, this is considered a large force, okay? So the buckling is not easy to uh, occur if you only have the driving force applied onto the system. However, the buckling uh, do occur uh, because of um, of the stress situation. If you have built, built in stress or original you know, inside the beam, so you can um, have this kind of, uh, uh, um, to meet this kind of requirement very easily. Okay? So that's why it's important uh, after the fabrication, we always do the annealing process, try to reduce the stress as much as possible. And also do the design of the support at the center, try to release most of the part of the, the, the stress after the releasing process. So, so, yeah, so compared to the driving force is large, but um, compared to the stress, maybe it's not a large force, actually. It can easily buckle the, the beam. Then we take the input power. The input power, we uh, charge the capacitor, remember. So the energy will be this much, and the output power will be the work we, uh, we, we, we were doing. Uh, you have a, a force, uh, times the displacement, and uh, because the force is a uh, constant force, so the force will be the electrostatic force minus the spring force. So after that, there's a total force you can output. But this needs to be integrated with the distance, because um, uh, at, at different distance you have a uh, similar force. So after the um, integration, you've got uh, this kind of uh, off the power. So you uh, divide the off the power into the total power in, you got a 50% efficiency. So it's quite typical for a uh, capacitive type of actuator or sensor. If it, efficiency is 50%, it's pretty high actually. If you consider uh, other, like thermal type, uh, we will talk about thermal type of actuator next week. The thermal type of actuator give usually less than 10% efficiency, couple percent to 10%. So compared to thermal type of actuator, uh, this the actuator will give you like a half of the energy for output. It's not bad. Because the other half will be a loss inside the capacitor when we want to charge the capacitor, remember. The, the current will go through all the outside circuit, right? They will generate heat, okay? Those things uh, will be the consumption of the energy when you're using the electrostatic force uh, uh, method as an actuator. But 50% is already pretty high. Of the efficiency. Consider that. Okay. Okay, I think it's the end of uh, this uh, lecture.
Yeah. So um, this is the end of the this kind of contract of actuation design and also application. So in your final project, you may consider to try to change a little bit about the structure, including the thickness and the gaps, and also that uh, other things can average more and try to increase the force. Otherwise, it's not in the application. <coughs> Another thing you can consider is uh, next week we'll, we'll talk about the, the, the thermal actuator. <coughs> The good thing for thermal actuator is that uh, thermal actuator can give a, a large force. Thermal actuator can easily give like a mini uh, Newton force, no problem. But, the, but at the same time, the displacement uh, uh, is extremely small, only in nail meter range. So here's a problem. So we'll talk about how to uh, compensate, to travel between 